So our next speaker is uh, Anders Sastrom from uh, ESS in Lund, Sweden. Uh, he's a mechanical engineer uh, working in the Motion Control and Automation Group in ESS. Uh, he's going to talk about this open source motion control package based on Ethernet developed in ESS, I guess. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so like I was introduced, I will talk about uh, a motion control project uh, we have at ESS today. So this is the outline of my talk, and I will go directly to the uh, overview of ETCAT field bus. Uh, so ETCAT uh, uh, is an abbreviation for Ethernet for Control Automation Technology. It's an open field bus standard uh, developed by Beckhoff. Uh, it's maintained by ETCAT Technology Group. One really nice feature with ETCAT is that there's really no requirement on the master side uh, for hardware. Uh, the only, only requirement is that you have a network interface card, basically. On the slave side, however, uh, you need to have an ETCAT slave controller chip. On the master side, the controller side, there are uh, many commercial available, uh, but also open source. And this is, of course, because you have no real requirement on, on, on the master side on the hardware, that you have also open source masters. Uh, available. Uh, one other nice feature with ETCAT is that it supports distributed clocks. Uh, so slaves in your network can be synchronized together uh, to rather high accuracy in time. And this will uh, then uh, allow for uh, uh, very good functionalities, especially for motion control and synchronized systems. Previous work. Of course, a lot of work has been put into ETCAT-related uh, things before by research facilities. And uh, here I've chosen to mention Diamond Light Source DLS ETCAT driver, which is an integration of ETCAT hardware into EPIC's environment, basically, for data acquisition and control. And PSI has also made an effort here, uh, also integrating ETCAT uh, hardware into EPIC's uh, and also to interface uh, commercial TwinCAT systems actually into EPICS. However, we have uh, focused more on motion control side and not so much on the data acquisition side in, in our project. EtherCAT at ESS, it has already been chosen as some kind of medium performance uh, platform for data acquisition and control. And the requirements for this medium performance roughly also agrees with what is needed for uh, a motion control framework. So that is also why we have looked into motion control with ETCAT. So what have we done? Uh, we have made something we call ECMC, which is an open source motion control framework, which is integrated into the EPICS environment. And for those of you who are familiar with EPICS, uh, we have uh, motor record support, which sometimes is very important. We don't need to use the motor record, but we can use it if we want to. So we have implemented the normal features like positioning, constant speed, uh, uh, referencing, soft limits, uh, limit switches, and such things. And then we also implemented some extensions that we can use if we, if we want, like interlocks, triggering and latching of positions, synchronization of axis to axis or axis to external timing systems. Then we also have some general features so we can use our framework as well for data acquisition if we want to or general IO and control. But it's not the focus. So this is an overview picture of the architecture of our system basically. Like I said it's integrated into EPIC's environment and uh, we have integrated like an EEE module we call it at ESS. It's an EP ESS EPICS environment module, uh, and all communication to EPICS records is handled to something called the ASIN interface. Specifically, the motor record is uh, communicating uh, through something called the Model 3 driver, motor driver. Uh, so ECMC then, basically it cons consists of two threads, uh, one uh, communication thread, uh, which uh, includes a command parser, for configuration and uh, slow communications. And then we have a motion thread, which is the actual real-time thread. And default, we run this in one kilohertz in our system, but it can also be other, other speeds. And this thread is responsible for uh, executing all uh, motion algorithms. And they are represented by the axis boxes here on the, on the picture. 
is also responsible for updating all information uh, to the ethicat image, all set point and actual values that then will be transferred to the slaves by the ethicat master. And we have chosen to work with open source ethicat master from Etherlab, IGH. Uh, then we also have this additional feature which we call direct access that we can access the complete ethicat process image or data on your ethicat network directly from Epix records in real time over ASIN interface as well. Uh, so to the motion algorithm then. We have chosen to implement all motion algorithms into an axis class, basically. And this class links to a range of different objects. For instance, an encoder object. And this object then needs to point to a position input on your ethicat bus. And that could be an encoder input, an analog input, a frequency input, or whatever, basically, that you, have, that you want to control on. Then we also have a trajectory object, which generates trajectories for emotion. Uh, so position set points, actually. And a PID control object. And then we have a monitoring object. And the monitoring object is, uh, is responsible for uh, evaluating the limit switches, which is then are connected to a ETCAT slave somewhere. It's also responsible for monitoring overspeed uh, and position lag, which could indicate that you have a mechanical issue in your system. Then we have a drive object, which needs to be linked to uh, normally to an output card, a drive card, could be a stepper drive, a pulse direction card, a servo drive, or any type of drive actually. Uh, in your system. So what is happening here is basically that the PID controller receives a set point from the trajectory generator and the actual value from the encoder and then feeds it through the PID algorithm and pushes it through the drive object and then it will go out to the drive basically. Uh, we also have some feed forward functionalities to uh, enhance, uh, to, uh, ensure good tracking of your, uh, of your trajectory basically. Meanwhile, the monitoring system is monitoring the motion, and if something is going wrong, it will be stopped. That's the idea, basically. Then we have some more advanced features, which is not covered by the motor record and its synchronizations. And we have chosen to implement uh, synchronizations by expressions and, or equations. And for this, we have used the C++ library called expression TK. So we have certain variables available in, inside these equations, like the set points position for each axis, the actual position for each axis. We also have the enable command for each axis, and we also have an interlock variable for each axis. And the interlock variable is allow motion for each axis, you can say. So some, some examples here. If you want to slave two axes, for instance, then the slave axis would be receive the actual position of the master. Uh, <coughs> if you want to synchronize two axes to each other, each, each other, then you want to like to feed the same set point to the two axes, of course. So it's quite simple like this. And with an optional gear ratio. Uh, more advanced things, you can use uh, any mathematical function. In this case, it's a sinusoidal. You can also use if statements or while loops or whatever in these expressions, linking the axes together, basically. And then we have interlocks, or allow motion. So basically, you can generate an equation here to allow motion for a certain axis depending on the actual position of other axes in your system. And all these equations then can be updated in runtime and will be evaluated in the real-time loop in one kilohertz, which then will ensure for set points, for instance, a good synchronization, a proper synchronization between your different uh, axes. Another thing we can do is that we can also link enable of your amplifiers. Of course, the uh, amplifiers, the drives need to have power. So if you, for instance, slave, slave an axis. So if you enable the master, probably want to enable your slave axis as well. Then this is handled with also an equation, basically. So this would be a simple example. Consider a two axis slit system and you would like to control the center point of the opening and the opening itself, uh, instead of only the pure uh, blade positions. So then we have implemented something we call a virtual axis, which is roughly the same as the axis I talked about before, but it lacks 
the output, the drive object, and the controller object, basically. So if we configure two of these axes corresponding to the center position and the opening of, of a slit system, and then uh, two normal axes corresponding to the, the real drive, the real motors, the real blades, then we would have four motor records or four axes in this, in this system right now. And then we need to tie these, these axes together with expressions. So for instance, the left blade position would then be the center point minus half the opening, of course. And the same side for the right, right one, it would be the center point plus half the opening. And in the same way, we can calculate the actual position of the virtual axis in this case. Then, of course, if we want to control the center position, we need to enable both these real axes connected to the motors. So then we also can link the enable signals of the, uh, of the drive cards. So here in this slide, we went one step further, actually, uh, just to show some nice feature. So we would like to test how to scan and to synchronize to an external timing system. So I've generated one more virtual axis. So I have five motor records in this case. One is linked to a uh, frequency input terminal, simulating a timing system in this case. And then we have linked the center position and the gap to this timing signal through some sinusoidal uh, equations, basically. So the gap is uh, oscillating with amplitude of five millimeters to this timing system signal, and the center point with 10 millimeters and different fre frequencies, basically. And then you can see how the actual uh, position of the real motors will be calculated out of this and controlled, of course. So the equation system is, is uh, solved for each loop, each uh, sample in the real-time loop, basically. All the way from the timing system down then through the virtual axis down to the real axis in this case. Hardware platforms, uh, like I said, uh, a nice feature is that there's no re real requirement on the master side. Uh, we are foreseeing that we will use it on micro TCA platforms, but we have not tested it yet, unfortunately. But that uh, will be within rather short. But we have used it on normal industrial computers and uh, Dean Rail controllers with no issues. We also see that virtually any EtherCAT slave can be used in this system. We already qualified quite some, some number. I think it's roughly 60, 80 different uh, EtherCAT slaves we can use with this, including a lot of drives. So this would be the summary of my talk then. Uh, yeah, we have made this motion control framework for EPICS basically. Uh, and yeah, we actually started to uh, implement it right now into our uh, accelerator applications. And we would like to continue to uh, evaluate hardware and also to add features as needed as use cases arrive basically. Of course, we have used a lot of knowledge from other projects, and we are really grateful, of course, for all the effort that has went into all these projects. Um, so that was it. Thank you. Any questions? We have time for a couple of questions. On your slide on about the scanning, um, you mentioned that uh, the calculations get updated every read cycle. Yeah. Which read cycle do you mean, and, and uh, what is the timing of that? In our case, the read time loop is, in this case, it was one kilohertz. So the equation system is solved in one kilohertz. So the set point to the individual axis are updated in one kilohertz. So where does this happen? Is, is this uh, synchronized to, to, the, uh, to the devices, or where does this, this timing come from? The timing system, like, like I said, is, 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 it's, it's just from a frequency input card in this case. So, so I have uh, configured up a virtual axis linking to a frequency input, basically simulating a timing system, and then uh, synchronized to this. Uh, it looked like you were using structured text for your motor interlocks. Um, is there some kind of a library or something that you're using to execute that code? 
uh, like I said, we, we use a C++ uh, expression library, which has sort of Pascal syntax into it, uh, where we have made certain variables available, which is then parsed. So it's not structured text, no, it's a, it's a different kind of language, but very similar, I would say. Hi, you said you're using it on your accelerator motion systems at the moment. Do you foresee using it in your beam lines and would the motion requirements be more complicated there? Uh, it depends a bit. Uh, we, we're also looking into commercial systems here, mostly for support reasons since we have a, uh, since we have a wide range of in-kind partners across Europe and then they can have local support. Uh, we also probably can offer them that they can choose which platform or something like that. But we also have decided that we need to keep the same hardware so we always can switch between an open source uh, solution like this and a commercial one, basically. Okay, let's uh, thank, thank uh, Anders again.